Happy Wednesday, everybody. Today we're going to talk about getting prototypical operation and lights on our Kato P42s. Alrighty, so bear with the lighting. It's going to shift a little bit here. But what I want to talk about is I have recently converted my Kato P42s over to TCS decoders and some of the settings that I have changed on those decoders from factory to make them function really prototypically and it's a little bit different than my, my usual setup. So anybody who has uh, ventured onto my channel in the last six months or so, I have completely, for the most part, converted my entire DCC ready fleet to either ESU decoders or TCS decoders. And for the most part, almost all of my Kato's are running strictly TCS decoders. And there are some major benefits to doing so. For example, uh, speed matching is basically not a thing. You can plug all the same settings into just about any Kato locomotive. And it's, for the most part, speed matched and ready to go. And I really like the way that TCS has their light programming setup, and that's kind of the reason why I shifted these from NCE and Digitrax decoders respectively. One of the first videos on my channel was actually installing the Digitrax decoder, I believe it was Digitrax, in the uh, Amtrak 161 here. And those decoders were perfectly reliable, except I did notice, especially with the NCE decoder, you had downhill runaways. So, before I did the review on these, I wanted to make sure I got them swapped into TCS decoders and put a good amount of runtime on them. Now, I have slightly different standardized settings that I use for my Amtrak units. And it it's that way for a reason because road locomotives, you know, general freight locomotives definitely function differently than passenger locomotives. These things accelerate faster, they just work a little bit different than normal um, you know, freight lo locomotives. So, to start off, we need to change some settings from factory. Uh, CV2, which is your start voltage, I found really works well at a setting of 5. And if I just give these 1 to 2 speed steps, you can see that they really creep along nice and slow, and they are relatively smooth in doing so. Uh, I have added just a hint of acceleration to these to kind of smooth out any uh, acceleration that I want to do. So a CV value of 10 for both 3 and 4 tend to work really good with these. You also don't get any funny jitters when slowing down relatively fast. So that, uh, that cleans up any back EMF issues you might run into. Um, as for your CV 6 and 5 respectively, I set a mid voltage CV6 at 60 and a max voltage of 120 for CV5. I have tested this with my speedometer and with my current track voltage because this varies slightly with track voltage. The speed step on my controller, 1 to 126, roughly matches the engine speed and scale miles per hour. So. For both of these, I can basically uh, run them at whatever mile per hour I want to with those settings, and they work flawlessly. So that has been a real game changer for these. They also work really well downhill now that I have TCS decoders installed in them. The back EMF really keeps that speed nice and locked in. So that is a cool little setup feature you can use on these to get them almost exactly scale mile per hour uh, speed matched. Now, when it comes to the lighting, I did a very similar setup to how I do my other Kato locomotives. However, I made some slight adjustments and that's why the, the lights are set up the way they are. Let's go ahead and activate mood lighting here. And you're gonna notice some light flicker. That is basically just frame rate acting with how, the, uh, how they dim the LEDs. These are perfectly smooth in real life, so just so you know. Uh, the first thing we need to uh, make sure CV33 is set to 1. That is our front light. It is uh, currently set to function 0, which it needs to be. CV34, you're going to switch to a value of 4, and that remaps your rear uh, tail light to function 1. The reason why I use function 1 
is for the most part I generally don't use the bell even on my sound locomotives usually when you hit the horn you get a bell for a period of time that's good enough for me it gets me good enough functionality so for the most part I don't use function one on anything so in consist it doesn't mess with the lighting so that's why I've moved my my tail light to function one CV49 is the next value you need to change and if you haven't downloaded the comprehensive uh, CV guide from TCS I would suggest doing so it breaks this down relatively well uh, but you want a value of 8 and that, what that gives you is rule 17 dimming on your headlight so in the stopped position the headlight is dim with a speed step you'll see that that brightens up and you're at full brightness I like that I prefer that over manually turning on the bright uh, bright lights so the same thing we want to do for our tail light <clears throat> so cv50 is going to be set for a value of 24 that gives the rear tail light in the reverse direction rule 17 dimming uh, so it'll function just like the headlight when function one is activated now cv61 we need to make some changes from our, our normal setup uh, you'll need a value of one that enables back emf a value of 16 which allows for rule 17 dimming because that functions with your back EMF function and you're going to need to add a value of 32 for a total of 49. 32 is constant dim in reverse so as you can see here 161 is in reverse and our headlight stays dim and should I switch the direction 161 will be the lead locomotive and 77 is the trailing and the, uh, the lights stay dim. That is for running an engine at the front of the train and one of the rear in opposite directions. That uh, kind of like a point to point system. That's how I get the, uh, the trailing engine to have dim lights. Now should you uh, run both engines in the same direction, uh, you can activate function one on the trailing locomotive before adding it to your consist on the regular DCC systems it looks a little bit different on my ESU system and then whilst running in uh, you know your consist it will already have the uh, the tail light on in all circumstances so when you flip to reverse it will come on and you'll get rule 17 dimming um, some other changes you might make if you notice both of these have slightly different light outputs when you uh, set your constant dim one, in the uh, comprehensive programming guide, I believe it is CV156. Let me check that quickly. Okay, scratch that. CV156 is your, your bright headlight setting. Uh, constant dim one, which is the rule 17 dim output, is CV64. What you see here is the default value on this engine which is I believe six it's either five or six and a CV value of one over here I prefer the dimmer of the two so uh, I will go back and set this one for one at some point here in the future TCS decoders have some of the brightest LEDs um, that there are they absolutely have the best lighting package out there when it comes to bright headlights and for the dim function you really need to step it down as far as you can for a good prototypical you know dim headlight now with my full lighting system on you can't really see it so in my videos I tend to run my dim lights um, in their standard and then for for most applications should I not be doing videos I like my lights set here so that's why that is what it is so I just wanted to go through how I get these set up they are really good runners i'm excited for the uh, the review this sunday i've been holding this one off for quite a while i've wanted to get tcs decoders in these for a long time now and as you can see with the settings here really nice slow operation and a good amount of acceleration so i really think i have the settings locked into a, a good good setup here. So thanks for stopping by everybody. I will see you this Friday for the rolling stock review and have a good rest of your week. Bye now.